Good evening and welcome uh, to the launch of the Global Corruption Barometer. Um, I think darkness now is probably going to cap our, our nuclear winter of the last week. Um, tonight we're going to hear the results of the first survey of uh, the attitudes of Irish people to corruption that's been done since 2007, which happened to be the last time we had a general election and an awful lot has happened in the country then, so I think um, but the results are going to be very interesting. Um, today is International Anti-Corruption Day, um, which has bypassed the vast majority of the population in this country and others, although you'd think that we might be more aware of it in a country where we have a whole language to describe it. Um, that you'd think it would be a, a red letter day in a country, you, you know, uh, bewitched by brown envelopes. Um, we've had two corruption tribunals going on uh, in Dublin Castle for the last 13 years, and yet we seem to be quite um, accepting of the symptoms of corruption in our society. And I suspect that that might have to do with the absence of a really good definition of what corruption is. For instance, you know, if a, if a government buys the people's votes by using the people's money to give them favours, is that corruption? Um, if a journalist writes up a puff piece uh, for a newspaper about a property development in return for a weekend golfing on the Algarve, it, is that corruption? You know, we, we really need to know what we're talking about. Um, and tonight, I'm hoping that the experts here will be able to explain all that and much more to us. Um, the theme of this evening is cleaning up Irish politics. And the first person who's going to speak is John Devitt, who's the chief executive of Transparency International Ireland. Uh, John is a communications specialist by training. Um, before he joined Transparency uh, International, he was a trade representative at the Irish Consulate in New Zealand and a press officer at the British Embassy in Dublin. Uh, he serves on Transparency International's Communications Committee and is also a member of the International Integrity Award Committee. And uh, John is going to give us a rundown on the findings of the survey. Uh, thanks, Justine. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Uh, tonight, just relieved we were able to hold the, the event, um, given uh, the weather the last couple of weeks. Um, before I, I share my thoughts on how we can restore trust in, in Irish politics, I'll run through some of the findings from, 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 from the launch of uh, today's Global Corruption Barometer. Um, some of you will have uh, been, been here at the last um, event, um, which was to launched the Corruption Perceptions Index. And the Corruption Perceptions Index is a, a poll of polls that effectively aggregates the scores from up to 14 different surveys conducted by um, experts, um, think tanks such as the Economist Intelligence Unit and the World Bank Institute. And it measures um, the business community's perceptions of corruption in, in relative terms. And it ranks countries according to how corrupt those countries are, are perceived to be by the international business community. Um, Ireland fares uh, relatively well. Ireland is ranked uh, 14th out of 189 countries um, according to how corrupt the international business community perceives Ireland to be. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, it's a little way off uh, countries at the top of the index such as Denmark and New Zealand we scored 9 out of 10, indicating very low relative levels of corruption. Um, it doesn't give the, the full picture, however. Um, and the definition used in the Corruption Perceptions Index is the abuse of public power or public office for private gain. The definition that Transparency International uses more generally is the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. So that encompasses the abuse of power by, by the private sector, it encompasses the abuse of power by church leaders, by people in the non-profit sector, wherever uh, power is entrusted. And essentially, the definition we use relates to the abuse of trust. Um, 
and it's it, it's it's the the definition that's used in the global corruption barometer. Now, the glo- global corruption barometer is um, is a, a public survey. It's published every year. This is the first time, as Justine said, in three years that Ireland has been covered in the barometer, and that's partly an accident of of the polling um, agents who who just didn't have uh, seem to have the money last year to to conduct it in Ireland. Um, and the barometer um, asks essentially four questions. It asks around ten questions, but these are the four uh, most important or, or, or um, uh, I suppose, high-profile questions in, in the survey. And the first is uh, whether the level of corruption has changed in the country. People are asked whether uh, corruption is affecting the country more uh, or has affected the country more in the past three years uh, than it did in the previous uh, year. And they're asked whether they had paid a bribe in the past 12 months. People are asked what institutions they believe to be the most affected by corruption and whether they believe their government is effectively tackling the problem. 4% of Irish respondents said they pay a bribe or had paid a bribe in the previous 12 months. Comparatively speaking, that isn't all that remarkable. Uh, across uh, Europe here, um, 5% of respondents said they had paid a bribe in the previous year. That compares to 56% in the Western Balkans and Turkey. Um, I think in, in Liberia, the rate was 86%. Um, I've seen it myself, I've talked before about how I've, I've witnessed police officers in, in Southeast Asia or Central Asia extorting money off, off uh, motorists or, or people demanding bribes at airports. It's not the kind of corruption where we're bad, that, that badly affects us here. Um, but the 4% is significant nonetheless. Um, what's more worrying for some people is the fact that the, the public believe that... 60% of people had said that the situation had... Uh, gotten worse over the previous three years, but that compares um, not so much well, but it, 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 it is, uh, again, it's not all that alarming when you consider that around 67% or 70% of people across North America and, and, and Europe said that the situation had gotten worse as well. Um, likewise, people believe that our institutions, our, our, our institutions across the public and private sector uh, are not to be trusted as much as they uh, where uh, three years ago. Political parties again rank at the top of the least trusted list, uh, closely followed by uh, members of parliament. A score of five indicates, and we have a score of 4.4 here, a score of five indicates a, an institution or a sector or a group of people that is believed to be badly affected by corruption score of one or close to one as in the case of the military or the army is uh, it indicates a, a low level of, of corruption what's most startling and we pointed out today was the place of religious bodies here and it's only in Norway I think and uh, Israel that religious bodies are less trusted than they are in Ireland I can't account for the reason in Norway um, again political parties score 4.4 out of 5 um, only two countries in the world had a worse score, and those were Nigeria and Greece.